When was the last time that a book about tanks made you laugh? Hello friends of Paperbound Knowledge Transfer and welcome to another book review on my channel. Today we are talking about two classic books about British tanks in the Second World War. Those two books together form British Armour in the Second World War with part one, the Great Tank Scandal, and part two, the Universal Tank, both written by David Fletcher, the David Fletcher of the British Tank Museum in Bowit. They were originally uh, published at the end of the 80s and in the early 1990s and have been long out of print. Indeed, today, if you want to buy one of the older versions, you will need to pay quite a hefty price online. Which is why it is very fortunate that the Tank Museum in Bovington decided to relaunch them with the help of a Kickstarter a crowdfunding campaign. Luckily, I took part in that uh, campaign, which is why I got my version of these two books in a very nice cardboard box together, the both of them together. And I even got a certificate that tells uh, the world that I helped raise the money to republish these books, and it is even signed by one David Fletcher MBE. Although I can't tell if it is a printed, uh, yeah, printed signature or if he really signed it, which would be very cool. Yeah. But a uh, word of warning, right now, looking at the online shop of the Tank Museum, I can't find this box there. So maybe it was a special for the um, crowdfunding campaign. Right now, it looks like you would need to buy these two books uh, individually and uh, can then read them. But enough said. Let's now have a closer look at those two books in question. Let us first look at the structure and the contents of the books. As I already said, the story about the British armour in the Second World War is separated into two books. Book 1, part 1, is The Great Tank Scandal, which roughly deals with the period from 1939 to 1942. Book 2, part 2, is the Universal Tank, which roughly deals with a period from 1942 to 1945. In part 1, David Fletcher kind of tries to answer the question why the British tanks of the Second World War, first half of the Second World War, were not up to the task, apparently, to fight the German tanks. A situation which back then apparently sometimes was called the Great Tank Scandal, hence the title of the book. Both books use the events of the Second World War as a backdrop to look at the vehicles involved and their design lineage and design decisions behind them, which is why I said roughly deals with the periods I just mentioned because, of course, many tanks which went to war in 1939 had already been designed, and so if you want to look at the design decisions sorry, behind them, then you have to look at the late 1930s, for example. So, Book 1 deals with events in France in 1940, uh, the North African desert, or the Western desert, as the British call it, and ends with the Dieppe raid, roughly in 1942. Both books don't only look at what an armchair historian in the YouTube or Facebook comment section would call a tank, but also deal quite extensively with armoured cars, with um, emergency vehicles built in Britain after the fall of France in 1940, and with specialised armour and its development. In fact, both books look quite extensively at specialized armor. So, for example, mine lane tanks or bridge lane tanks. Part two of the book, or part two, book two, uses the campaign in Tunisia, uh, Italy, and the battles uh, after the landings in Normandy for France and the fight into the Reich as a backdrop to talk about 
newer tank designs, for example, the Cromwell and the Comet. Both books are quite richly illustrated by black and white photographs and drawings of tanks. People who know the tank chats on YouTube by David Fletcher will be familiar with its yeah, unique style. And that style is also very much here in this book, in his writing. Very entertaining, very funny. I particularly liked the um, section about the Valiant tank, I think it is. A tank that was a tank design that was so bad that it only served as a, an example for uh, generations of armored uh, officers who had completed some course at the armor school on how to not design a tank. Very funny indeed, that section made me laugh quite a bit. Let us now look at the more positive and negative aspects that I think are noteworthy about these two books for me personally. Negative aspects, I think the book could have been a bit more structured. I think it is kind of a bit of the writing style of the time, you know, late 1980s, early 1990s. But for me, it would have been nice if there had been more, I don't know how I could say this in English, or I should say this in English, intermediate headlines. Like there's a one chapter that talks about different tanks, different uh, systems, and, and I think there should be a little note somewhere saying, hey, uh, up from here on in, it's a Churchill Flayer tank, and not just, you know, one paragraph ending, tsk, Churchill Flayer tank beginning. It would be nice for, maybe also for looking at the book again, if you want some information on a specific topic. It would be easier to find in my mind. And also, uh, it would be nice if there was a summary of the findings uh, somewhere at the back of the book, like these were the five, ten, ten reasons for uh, the great tank scandal, for example. Um, I don't think there's such a summary or my memory is just very short and because my memory is very short I would have liked such a summary. And um, one other question, why is this not one book? Um, it's really not that thick or they are really not that thick together. Um, I think it would have been manageable and uh, yeah, I don't know why they split it up. Maybe it's a prior thing, maybe they couldn't do it for uh, technical reasons with whoever supplied them with the, uh, I don't know, with the binding. I don't know what the English word is. But hey, I think it could have been one and it would have been fine, would have been cool for me. But that's just a small point. Positive points about these two books. I think, and this is the most positive point, they are funny and witty. I have seldom laughed while reading a book about history or tanks. But the description of some tanks um, and some trial tanks maybe they had and some ideas they had by David Fletcher is really cool. Just like in the tank chats, just like I said about the uh, Valiant, I think very nice and uh, brightened my day, made my day reading about the Valiant. And yeah, I'm very grateful for that. The book, the book and the books are insightful, so funny and insightful. So we get a lot of information while also being entertained. Wonderful. And I think the story is quite complete. It's not only the A14 or the Cromwell or the Comet or the Churchill. No, it's the entire line of thinking and design throughout the war of the British uh, yeah, concerning armored vehicles and specialized vehicles. And that is very nice to have that in one pack, in two packages. Very cool. And now for my final verdict. In my mind, these two books can be summed up by funny and insightful. Seldom has a history book made me laugh, but David Fletcher manages this feat quite a few times in these two books, while also answering one of the questions I always had about tanks. Why were British ones not that good at the start of the Second World War? If you always wanted to know the answer to this and many other uh, questions about British tanks in the Second World War, then these two books are the right resource, the right source for you. And as a bonus, you can also support the British Tank Museum in Bovington, the Tank Museum in Bovington, 
by buying these two books from their online store because they are a charity and they need money to continue their great work. So now for my reading recommendations for books in the same kind of topic range. The first one would be Tanks by Richard Ogorkovich, which uh, tells you about the story of the tank from 1916 to the late 2010s. Nice, nice book by an expert about tanks, which I've also done a video about. The second one would be The Tank Book by the Tank Museum, on which I've also done a video quite a while ago, so uh, don't be too harsh. But that is a book that is yeah, no more picture driven and gives you more of a yeah, maybe kid-friendly introduction or a beginner's friendly introduction into the topic of tanks. I would recommend that very much. And then I can recommend to you the different Haynes user workshop or Haynes manuals on um, yeah, specific tanks like the Abrams or the Churchill on which I've also done videos. I will link those videos in the description below. At this point, I can only say very nice that you watched my video. Thank you very much for that. If you are interested in the topic um, or if you maybe have some comment about my video or about the book, maybe you've read it as well, put that in the description below if you like. And without further ado, have a nice day, have fun reading, goodbye.